Hey there everyone, thank you so much for tuning in, thank you so much for watching. I've decided to completely skip on an intro this video because I wanted to invest this minute or minute of, of a, a minute and a half of time into the actual meat of this video. And the focus and the goal of our video is something that I've gotten a lot of questions about. What we are going to do today is we are going to create a complete network with unified gear, I mean switching and wireless with a non-unified firewall and another assumption there are a lot of use cases another assumption i'm going to make in this video is that your controller is not local to the network not a udm not a udm pro not even a cloud key my assumption is that your controller is off-site whether it's in the cloud or in your headquarters if your unified controller is local to your network you're in a far easier place in technical terms so if we have unified gear switching and wireless with a non-unified firewall and a cloud or off-site controller, we are automatically forced to use layer 3 adoption methods, meaning in, in technical terms, we need to find a way to point our unified devices to where our unified controller is, the IP address of the unified controller. Now, we have several options for the layer 3 adoptions to happen. The, the first one is something that I'm not even going to touch in this video, it's SSH, meaning we will need to manually SSH into each and every device, our unified device, and then uh, type a command, set in form, and this will uh, locally or manually divert the device to where the unified uh, controller is waiting for, uh, for it to be uh, adopted. Second and third options are more broad or designed for larger scale devices. I do recommend using this DNS and DHCP option 43, even if you have two or three devices, because I'm in the IT field for several years, and I know that you need to plan today, even if you have several devices, for the day that you will have hundreds or thousands. So I'm going to touch on the DNS and DHCP option. So, what we're going to do, our game plan, in, in very brief, we are going to create VLANs on our firewall sides, on our fire, firewall side, sorry. The VLANs will be the, the, the firewall will be the origin point of the VLANs. Again, my assumption is that you are not using just a flat network. You do need to create several VLANs to segregate your network. The VLANs will be trunked into a unified switch that will be uh, that we will be configuring in the unified controller that will be managing both of these devices we will create vlan only networks so that the firewall and switches and access point will know about the same vlans and they will be able to communicate with each other and then when we have our vlans created we will use option two and three simultaneously we will create them together all right guys that's enough talking let's switch right over to our uh, pfsense device now this pfsense device is pretty vanilla it's just been factory reset it first thing that i would like to do to create my vlans i'm going to click on interfaces and assignments by the way i already have uh, videos on creating vlans on PFSense, I do recommend that you uh, watch uh, my PFSense playlist. There are a lot of videos I created on PFSense. So we are going to go to the VLANs tab right here and we will start creating VLANs. By the way, just before you start uh, creating VLANs, make sure that you know that your uh, the LAN device or the LAN port that you're creating or splitting into VLANs. For me, it will be IGB-1. That's what you need to remember. Let's go back to VLANs, click on Add. This is where you'll need to change the parent interface into IGB-1, or at least for me. You will need to choose your LAN interface, the LAN port that you're uh, using to connect uh, internal devices. Let's create a VLAN tag of 10. Click on save. Let's create another one. VLAN tag of 20. And click on save. Let's go back to interface assignments. Let's choose our new 
10 VLAN, click on add. Let's choose our 20 VLAN and click on add. Great. Click on save. Let's give a name to our new VLAN, enable the interface, and let's call it, I don't know, clients. IPv4 conf configuration will be static IPv4. And let's give it an IP address. We'll, we're actually giving an IP address for the interface, for the VLAN interface. And let's give it 10.1 on a 24 subnet. Apply changes. I'm breezing through this process. I already created a, a, deta a more detailed video specifically on VLANs. Let's click on OP3, which is our 20 VLAN. Enable it and let's call it IoT. Static IPv4. 10.100.20.1 on a 24 subnet. Apply. Great, we have our VLANs and interfaces created. What I want to do right now, again, I'm not going into detail into firewall rules. I just want to make sure just for the purposes of this video is the traffic on, this, on these VLANs can be routed internally and externally. So I'm just going to create a very loose rules. I do not recommend that you replicate uh, what I'm doing here, create strict firewall rules. All right, I'm going to pass any destination, any. Same for the second VLAN, any protocol, any, any. I just want to make sure that for, for the purpose of this demonstration, devices that will be connected to this network will be able to communicate. Great, our firewalls, uh, our firewall rules are ready, our villains are ready. What we need to do right now in order to continue to prepare to our layer three adoptions, we will need to configure DHCP. On our LAN network, we already have DHCP enabled. That was part of my initial uh, setup wizard. But what I do recommend, again, you don't have to. What I do recommend when you configure your IP addresses and DNS servers, also create a domain name, even if you're not in an active directory environment, you don't have to. I just do recommend, I, I think that it will be better with a domain. Now, this is not a real domain, a real routable domain. It can be whatever you want, but use a domain if you can. I'm going to enable DHCP for both of my new VLANs. I'm going to use the same DNS servers and the same domain name Great, same for our second VLAN. All right, so we are done configuring our DHCP, meaning that clients that will connect to these networks will be able to grab an IP address and get connectivity. And let's start configuring the DNS side of uh, layer three adoptions. Let's click on services, DNS resolver. Scroll down to host overrides and click on add. The host will be Unify and the domain will be the domain that we have configured on our DHCP step. And the IP address, this is where you will put the real or the routable IP address of where your Unify controller is located. located. By the way, I assume you already have a controller ready and configured and all the ports are already forwarded. By the way, there is a great knowledge base article from Unify. If you want to know what ports you need to forward, these are the ports. I've already forwarded them on my Unify uh, controller where my controller is located. And I'm going to click on save, click on apply. And what this should do is that unified devices that will plug into network and power will come online, grab an IP address from DHCP, and then start looking for someone that will answer to 
Unify. Who is Unify? Where is Unify? And the DNS resolver host override that we created should answer this call. We can test that. I just forgot uh, to mention something. At least on the LAN network, or at least the, uh, the network or VLAN that your Unify devices will be connected to, typically it's LAN, make sure that the first DNS server will be the, uh, the firewall IP address itself. And then the second and third, if you want, will be, uh, can be external, uh, external DNS servers. The reason is when we use the DNS option of layer three, uh, uh, layer three adoptions, we need the host or the client, sorry, to first query the DNS server that has this host override that we created. So now that I created this uh, in, uh, first DNS server to be the IP address of my PFSense firewall. I can now again do an IP config flash DNS. And again, I'm going to ping unify.techmeout.com. And indeed, it doesn't reply to pings, but I do have a, a resolving going on, meaning that the DNS option or the DNS configuration is indeed in place. All right, but we are not going to stop here. We are going to also simultaneously create the third option. It's DHCP option 43. The way that you configure it in PFSense is that, let's go into services and DHCP server. Again, at least on the network that will be, that the unified devices will connect to, we are going to scroll down and click on additional boot P or DHCP options. And then we're going to specify option 43 and type string. Now we cannot just type an IP address here. I, at least we, th that's not what the uh, DHCP uh, server expects to receive. We'll need to take the IP address of our Unify controller and convert it into an into a hex string there are several div several uh, websites that have this kind of converters ready for, uh, free and ready for you to use i'm going to even specify a link to the one i am using all right so here's a great website that does this job very well very clear all you need to do is to scroll a bit down type here the ip address of your unify controller and click on the arrows here and the site will convert your uh, IP address into the actual value you need to put in the option 43 uh, option. Going back to our PFSense, let's go into DHCP server. All right, click on additional DHCP options, option 43, let's change it to string and let's paste in the value that the site created for us. And actually, that's it on the PFSense side. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to boot up my Unify devices. I have a Unify switch and a Unify access point. I'm going to boot them both up and I'm going to switch over to my actual Unify controller. All right, guys, so I've been having some connectivity issues. So what I had to do, I jumped over to a virtual machine uh, where my Unify controller is actually located. They're on the same network. As you can see, my Unify controller is pretty empty and basic. I, am, uh, I do want to check if my Unify devices have already checked in to the controller. Let's go into Unify devices. And as you can see, success. They're both uh, ready to be adopted. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's start adopting our devices. While the devices are getting ready to be adopted, let's get head over to our settings menu right here because we will need to match the networks that we've just configured on our PFSense device on our Unify controller as well. The first thing that we need to do is to change the default uh, subnet to the same subnet the, the devices are connected to. We are not using the auto scale option, not at all. 
and we are not using DHCP. Again, we have a different DHCP. It's our PF sense. We don't need it. This will have to be a, a, a dot one in the end. Sorry. And now let's create our VLANs. The same ones that we've created on our PF sense, but it will be a VLAN only network. The VLAN ID will be 10. And let's create our IoT network, VLAN only, VLAN tag 20. Right, so now we have a sort of a match between the VLANs on our firewall and the VLANs in our Unify controller, so they will be able to understand each other. Next step is to create, for demonstration purposes, a Wi-Fi network. Let's call it PMO IoT. And let's attach it to our IoT network, meaning devices that we connect to this SSID should get an IP address from the IoT VLAN, meaning 10.100.20. Wireless settings, again, based on your needs. If you only need it on uh, 2.4, for example, if you want to disable band steering, I'm gonna leave everything default just for these demonstration purposes. Add a Wi-Fi network. Sorry, I forgot a password. All right, so at this point, the devices should start provision uh, with the new uh, uh, settings that we've created. I guess that can take about a minute. We, we can see that the devices got an IP address, LAN IP address from the LAN network. All right, we can see that all devices have finished provisioning. And now I'm going to try to take a mobile phone and connect to the IoT network, TMO IoT. All right, so let's open up the Wi-Fi menu. We indeed see the TMO IoT network. Let's try to connect. All right, so we are successfully connected to the TMO IoT network. Let's check our IP address. As you can see, we are on 10.100.20.100, meaning that indeed our wireless network was successfully attached to the correct VLAN. And this VLAN was successfully carried to our firewall and I got a DHCP address from the DHCP server on my PFSense device. One more thing, just before I sign off this video, since we, have a, since we have a switch on our client network, we can even take several ports and assign them to the VLANs that we've created. Even though they are VLAN only networks, if we'll assign a port to the IoT network, the client that is connected to this network, to this port, sorry, should get a LAN uh, or a wired IP address from the IoT segment. In fact, let's try it. I'm going to take the port that my computer is connected to and I'm going to connect it uh, to, uh, to assign to the port profile of the IoT network. Click apply. This should take a minute or two to populate, but let's jump over back to my device and let's do an IP config release and an IP config renew. And as you can see, we got an IP address from the IoT VLAN, from the IoT segment, meaning that indeed our VLANs are configured the way they should and both PFSense and the Unify side and the Unify devices controller are able to communicate with each other and uh, everything is working as it supposed to. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I assume that there will be a lot of questions. I encourage you, everyone, if you have a question, type a, type a comment in the, in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer all your questions. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.